Hey guys, my name is Sid. Welcome to another tech review. Today we're going to be checking out the DJI RoboMaster right here. Hey, how you doing, buddy? Whoa! So DJI is known for making cool drones. They make some of the best drones in the world. I recently reviewed the Mavic Air 2, which I think is one of the best drones that you can buy right now. I'll leave the link up over here. But in the last few years, DJI has also diversified their product range. So they make gimbals, they make action cameras as well. And now they're also making this thing, which is a battle robot. So one of the unique things about this product is it is both a toy to play with as well as a learning tool. The way that DJI does this is that this whole thing comes disassembled. You get about 46 parts in the box that comprise of all the different elements that go into making a robot like this. If you look closely at the drone, you'll see that many of the cables and stuff are exposed and that's done purposely so that they're easily replaceable as well as they give you a good idea of how the different systems on this robot operate. Now, if you look at the back of the drone as well, you will see that the circuit board is exposed and all the different sensors and all the different cameras all go into that circuit board. So as you assemble this drone, you kind of learn about robotics and what goes into making a product like this. The robot comes with a bunch of features as well. It's got a 1080p camera on the front. It's got a Wi-Fi module on the top, which allows you to connect your iPad or your iPhone directly to this device and control it that way. There's also four pressure sensitive and light sensitive pads on all sides of the drone. So the idea behind it is that you could play virtual tag with somebody using these drones and these will be used to measure how many times you get hit. So there are two methods of using this drone. One is just by using the light gun which is inbuilt into the cannon over here as well as add tiny little pellets which you have to soak in water for three to four hours and then put it in the chamber of the back of the device over here which will allow it to shoot out from the front. DJI claims these to be really safe, they're biodegradable and they will automatically turn to dust once they hit the target. So there's not too much to worry about when it comes to safety with children. The drone also has a light sensor over here. It's divided into eight segments. So this will allow you to see things like how much life you have left. And it also gives you a couple of different indicators to show you, for example, when the drone is updating, when it's connected to Wi-Fi. Also, when you start it up, it makes that cool startup sound, which sounds absolutely awesome. Something like out of an anime cartoon or something like that. Now, one of the coolest things about this drone is the way it moves. They've got something called Mechanum wheels. So if you look at the wheel individually, they've got multiple rollers on them which allow these wheels to not only move front and back, but also sideways. So this is one of the coolest features of this drone. So if you look at it, the way it moves sideways, it gives you this amazing strafing ability. So strangely enough, when the drone is moving forward or backwards, it's not as fast as when it's strafing because of the design of this wheels. And now this drone doesn't have a very high top speed. You can't really race through an obstacle course like say an RC car but it does give you a lot of maneuverability and flexibility when it comes to its operation with the gimbal on the top which allows you to control the head of the drone and aim very precisely as well as the front back and sideways motion as you can see this is on a tabletop which is very close to the edge and if i wasn't really sure of the precise nature of the movement of this drone i would never put it on top of this table and try to control it with my ipad over here now the way you control this drone is through your ipad or iphone they have an app that looks very similar to the one that you would use while flying a drone. On a flying drone, you'd have your left stick determine the front, back, left, right position of the drone. The right stick would control the yaw as well as the height. Now with this thing, it's almost the same thing. So the right stick, you can control the up and down motion of the camera and the gun. As you try to corner around, you see that the whole drone moves instead of just the top part moving, which allows you to have a much more precise and fine grained control. The left stick as usual controls the front, back and sideways motion of this device. As a child as well, I think you'd probably be able to pick it up in about 10 minutes or so. You also have this additional shoot button on the screen, which allows you to shoot your cannon, which is a light cannon. So here you can see what it looks like. It makes this pew pew sound. Now, one of the coolest things about this robot is being able to program custom gestures and custom functionality into it. So one, it's a way to get a competitive advantage when you're playing with other people. 
And the second thing is it actually teaches children to learn programming. So being a programmer myself, I was looking into the programming capabilities of this drone. It has drag and drop functionality, but at the same time, you understand a lot of the logical context of how to do programming, what if statements, routines, uh, subroutines, things like that. It's a core necessity that you at least understand a little bit about programming in our modern world because so much of the things that we do on a day-to-day -day basis is driven by technology. So I think at least having a basic grasp of programming knowledge is pretty much a must for today's generation. And this is a tool that actually allows you to do that. It allows you to sit and program different things. It's got many capabilities inside it. It's got an inbuilt mic, which can detect different sounds. So you can program it to do something based on a sound. It's also got the inbuilt technology to recognize a person. So you can set it up to do something as soon as it detects a person. It's also got inbuilt functionality to follow you everywhere you go and be your own like cameraman if you want. You can also set it up so that, for example, if somebody shoots you from this side, the drone will automatically turn to that side and fire a returning shot. And it uh, allows you to be good with your reflexes, but also, uh, you know, get that competitive advantage with some cool programming skills. The robot also comes with an inbuilt speaker, which allows you to record and send voice commands to it. So the idea behind it is you can either connect this device to your phone or tablet directly or you can actually connect this to your router to get a much better range out of it. So uh, in my situation, I've got this set up with my mesh router at home, which has really good coverage all over the house. If you guys are wondering what a mesh router is or how it works, check out the review I did of the TP-Link P9. I'll leave a link right here. This is connected to my mesh network over here, so I can pretty much control this device throughout my house and uh, go all over the house without actually leaving this room. And if I want, I could send a message. Now, the battery life on this thing is not that great, especially considering that when you're doing the programming stuff, you kind of have to have the device on to send the commands to it. So uh, you get about 35 minutes of battery life on a single battery, and it does take a while to charge as well. I'd say about an hour, hour and a half to charge it up. So you only get about 30 to 40 minutes of playtime with it. Now you can obviously buy extra batteries for it, um, and you get a bunch of accessories for it as well, like a specialized remote control if you want. Uh, but I think the main draw of this device is the ability to program it, the ability to learn while using it. And uh, it's just a cool piece of tech to have. This device also allows you to capture video, by the way, at 1080p and take photographs as well. I think it's a 12 megapixel camera. Uh, now the image quality is not that great, maybe slightly even worse than what you'd see out of an action camera. But I'll show you some of the sample footage I got out of this thing. Uh, now I don't know where you'd really use that except if you wanted to kind of get a replay of how you play it or something like that. But it's cool that they allow you to record the video just like they do on a drone. Now I think if, uh, if DJI made this a bit more adaptable and not just made it like a, a shooting toy, and had some different kinds of arms on this where you could pick up things or execute different kinds of maneuvers using this same setup. I think it would make a more interesting toy. So DJI, if you're listening, if you could, uh, for the next iteration, maybe add some different arms or something else that you could put on the top over here instead of a gun, that would make it a lot more interesting just to play around with this as a utility and a toy. Now this thing looks like a tank and it is built like a tank. I bumped it into a bunch of things and it's not even got a scratch on it. So if you want to be a little rough with this thing, you can totally do that. I mean, it is designed to fight other robots in a battle arena. In conclusion, this is a really cool toy and it's definitely an interesting tool to allow kids to learn programming and understand some of the engineering aspects of a robot like this. This is not really a filmmaking tool or anything like that. This is just for fun. Anyway guys, if you like this video, hit that like button, leave me a comment, subscribe to watch more videos like this, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.